welcome back to Pokemon Platinum. We beat the uh, sumo wrestler water person. Oh yeah, we have plot stuff now. Do do do. Oh wait, no, that's wait. Is that doom? Did doom or doom? Heavy metal intensifies. <laughs> yeah, but now since there were three D's, I'm imagining King DDD as the Doomerine. And I I don't know if that's a good I have to annihilate them, not their Kirby's. <laughs> turn it turn. Turn it turn. He cocks he, co he cocks the um the hammer. <laughs> I think the gun would just shoot the hammers, probably. <laughs> yeah, the um the uh the floaty orb guys are are just Kirby's. <laughs> <laughs> Hi <laughs> Takes a chainsaw to their faces. The, wow, the this this these. grunt is actually smart and not even bothering to fight us. Like that's the most intelligent grunt in the in the series so far cuz he knows he can't win. Although he's losing the points by being I'm a, I'm on a bike, you're running by foot. <laughs> um I just caught a galactic guy before he interrupted Looker. You are not a very good policeman. <laughs> So are you and Zenny gotta go have drinks after this? You know, I'm on a bike. I can catch them for you if you want. Why did they... And, okay. And they're just gone. Why did they only put one policeman on a case that about uh, a cult trying to destroy the world? Like, normally that gets, like, a team. I, I, I imagine that Luker is just kind of the cop nobody likes because he's kind of an idiot. So they put him on the intentionally sketchy, stupid-sounding jobs that just happen to be important. Oh, there's these people with weird hair and Sinnoh, you know, like, maybe causing a ruckus. It's probably not that serious, but... Oh, God. Look, Looker's look, look, back look. from vacation. Hey, buddy! We got a case for you here! Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now he'll fight us, because he's just fed up with our shit. <laughs> <laughs> He has no other choice at this point. Look at you, you only have one Pokemon. What chance do you have? Oh yeah, Team Galactic also... Like, aside from some of the, the leaders, has, like, some of the lamest Pokemon in the series. Like, one of these people literally has, like, a level 30-something Wurmple at one point. And it's, like, right in the final stretch, right before you fight Cyrus. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I mean, no. granted, not... Not that evil team variety has ever been a strong suit for Pokemon. A wormhole at level thirty. How many times had have you had to have gotten the evolution notification and press the button that says no? Uh, don't. since it's evolves the first time at level seven, so twenty three times. Twenty three. It's like, and he. It's probably not old holding an Everstone either. So, uh, why does everybody keep on trying to talk to us about this as if they're going to do anything to help? I'm the main character. You guys go away. I do like that the um, the champion here, you know, comes along with you on the final adventure and all of that. Kind of reminds me of Lance and Crystal, but well, we got the secret potion. Well, that's that the secret potion. The secret potion. Lance did stuff. Is the thing. I like, know. Uh, the thing, like you see Lance. Like I mean, granted, Lance is kind of not the most I mean it's an it's an early game so I guess there's that going for it but Lance actually impacts what's going on when you're raiding the rocket base cuz you see him like he's the one who breaks into it in the first place and you see him fighting some trainers and they remark about yeah, how strong it, they're on. Cynthia's just kind of there is the it, thing she doesn't that, participate. <laughs> isn't Lance also involved in like the uh Red Gyarados thing? Uh, yeah, he's, that, 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 yeah. That's right before that, yeah. He just, he shows up, and that's what, that, the Red Gyarados incident is what drives him to there, and the, you do the rocket base there right after the Red Gyarados right. stuff. And there's some stuff with Suicune. Is he involved in that, or was it another uh, character? No, that that's was, Sweet. Yeah, that was a different character. Right. So, so yeah, so they don't have Lance do a lot. I can't remember if he's technically present for the Dragon's Den stuff. They mention him for sure because they're like, "Oh, it's oh, just, you want to be like your brother, don't you?" Uh, it, it was just cool to have this reoccurring character from the first generation pop in and have more story significance. 
Yeah, because in the first generation, you don't see him, like, at all. He just stands in. He just stands in a room. Yeah, and you you assume that he's the final boss because he's all, you know, like he's using dragon Pokemon and he's all majestic looking. And then the surprise is, oh no, it's your rival instead. Um, which is what makes you know the Gen One champion interesting is because oh the twist is it was that douchebag who's been ahead of you the entire time. In Gen Gen Two Gen Three tries to do kind of what Gen Two it did with Steven being the the Steven being the champion and I feel like they kind of do a little bit of a better job with Steven than they do with Cynthia cuz Steven kind of helps a little bit more he gives you more stuff that's pertinent the only thing is is that he's also not as active as Lance was is the problem he mostly just kind of stands around and tells you what to do is the is the thing. I could do it myself, but I'll have you do it instead. Yeah, he's certainly strong enough to do it himself, for sure. So, yeah. I mean, honestly, you see, one thing I don't get is a lot of people say that Alder is one of the worst champions, and I disagree, because he's, like, the only one up to that point who actually has, like, a character arc and motivations that are more... <laughs> more interesting than just oh i wanna i'm a douchebag or he's, i'm mysterious he also, he, he, which i suppose also, is a person he also likes to spew old man wisdom yeah like all it's like cynthia i can't really think of what her personality is supposed to be i guess she likes archaeology but liking something isn't a personality like Gary has a personality because he's a it's, douchebag, but <laughs> I, I, I'm a little mixed because with Cynthia, I get the feeling they're trying to go for a milder personality. They just don't have the a production uh, presentation, I should say, in this game to make that stick. Yeah, that, that's, that's why that's where a remake really could help with that. Yeah, I mean, if, if it were done in like uh, Sun and Moon graphics, they could probably make Cynthia really nice. E maybe. Um, I just never really got why people said that Alder was one of the worst ones, because he's the only one with a backstory and character development. So it's like, okay, you're going to say that the Which one... Which one is Alder? Alder's Gen the Gen 5 uh, 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 champion. He, he's the old guy who uses bugs. Yeah, so his whole thing is, is that he was the champion, but then his favorite Pokemon died. And so he lost his spark to, to fight and had been kind of like soul sh searching for the past couple of years is the thing. And then when the, you know, Team Plasma stuff happened, you know, he it's his job to, you know, try to do something about it. So he tries to intervene. But after all of that time, he's not strong enough to beat uh, N. And so N is able to become champion of the Pokemon League and get their, you know, evil plan going basically is the thing so there's actually some interesting stuff going on there and also his theme music is bumping so you know i, I... <laughs> ted don't, don't don't you forget about the best champion of all what's your name from gen 6 oh god <laughs> i can't even remember her name it's like di di dianthea or something like that she's she's i think in like one cutscene before the end of the game maybe she, yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, God. She's, He's, like, in a cafe once, and that's it. <laughs> easily the worst champion in the series, like, by far. So, I don't... I don't know what... I don't know what they... Gents... So, have you guys seen, like, the... The stuff that, um... Like, the development stuff from X and Y that was cut? I think... I feel like we already talked about this. That's uh, I don't think... I don't think we talked about cut content. Yeah, so X and Y were originally going to be much different games than what we ended up getting. And the the short version, uh, you know, you know, losing some accuracy for the sake of brevity, is, is that they had to cut a lot of interesting stuff because the process of just making a 3D Pokemon game took too much time. So right. the so they were there was going to be kind of a darker story overall, like the villain was going to be your stepdad was one thing that oh. they were going to go for. There were some kind of darker Pokemon uh, designs going in. Like, I think one of them was based off of the Dullahan, which is the horse rider without a head. Um, right. 
So there was some, I, I forget a, a lot of it. If you Google, you could probably find the yeah. stuff that I'm talking about. But it's just disappointing because I feel like there was a lot that they could have done with the setting that they were going for. And I guess, you know, I'm not a big fan of the whole, oh, there was a great Pokemon war many years ago. Because... Did it take place at the same time as the Great Keyblade War? <laughs> like, I, I mean, I, I'm on and off with how dark the Pokemon stories should be, you know? Because it's, again, like we were talking about this a few parts ago. Where to Pokemon has a tone problem. In that a lot of the implications are super dark, but the the surface stuff is so kid-friendly. And Nintendo doesn't like to go to the dark places a lot of the time. You know, which makes their sometimes attempts at making a dark story like in X and Y particular feel really off because a lot of it kind of comes out of nowhere like I don't know how I feel about that it's a it's a it's a lot and I'm talking out of my ass right now so I can't be I can't form a good opinion or I get what you're saying so. to tonal balance is difficult like yeah. there are precious few series who can, that can handle more than one tonal emphasis at one time like the yakuza series is pretty well known for being both very gritty and serious and really of, weird and wacky at the same time out of the nintendo franchise i say zelda's probably the best at that yeah yeah i'd say so yeah i mean yeah well i mean mario only has one tone for the Ma most part, mario so doesn't mario count. has gotten some Decent tonal balance things. It's mostly been the RPGs, though. So that Mo that. Mostly the Only RPGs. Some of them. Yeah, like <laughs> Thousand Year Door did it well, but I'm also thinking about like parts of Galaxy One. Galaxy yeah, Galaxy One specifically. One, well, Galaxy One, you see, it's kind of weird. I feel like a lot of the time people mistake having scope for trying to be darker. Is, I'm, is I'm, I'm not necessarily saying tonal balance as in necessarily as related as it relates to dark things there's more than yeah. one there's more than one way to balance conflicting tones like yeah. i brought up yakuza where it has, where it's grim and serious on one hand but also really weird and wacky on the other uh with with mario galaxy it's more like whimsical but epic yeah well you see i bring it up because like if i remember correctly i'm going to you know, abbreviate something that Miyamoto said. It was just like, oh, there was too much story, or it was either there was too much story in Galaxy 1, or it, d Galaxy 1 was too dark. I can't remember which one it is. I think but, it was mostly story. Yeah, but it's just like, no, Galaxy 1 didn't have too much story. It just had more scope, you know? It was trying to have a, a grander sense of scale. And I feel like, you know, a lot of the time people talk about stuff trying to being too dark for the kind of material that it's going for but it's not it's not really i don't feel like that's the case like the best example i can think of is sonic adventure 2 where for the most part sonic adventure 2 isn't really a dark story or at least it's not any darker than like your average episode yeah, of dragon well, ball z <laughs> not until the last 10 minutes yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know it's it's i mean i'm not saying that you know you have to think that sonic adventure 2 is well written because that's a that's a whole nother can of worms but it's really not that dark you know, like, the whole, like, maybe Maria's backstory is kind of dark, sure. But the rest of it, no, not really. It's just, you know, just on a grander scale than most other Sonic games, you know. Like, I mean... There's, there's... consequences to <laughs> stuff going on in the world other than just Eggman's doing no good, you go bop him in the head. <laughs> yeah, basically. And I mean, again, I'm not going to sit here and say that Sonic Adventure 2 is a well-written story because its plot is all over the place but it's not i wouldn't say it's dark you know for the most part it's, it's also it's it's also another decent example of the tonal balancing because on the one hand you have you know i have a giant cannon that can blow up the world that's kind of heavy stuff and then sonic's quipping at you know yeah knuckles for being an idiot because he lost the master emerald again <laughs> <laughs> yeah like there's there's plenty of levity in that game you know or at least an attempt at levity you you might not think that the jokes are funny, but that's definitely what they were going for. <laughs>